Hey y'all, happy Sunday and welcome to this week's live Q&A session. This is the portion of the show where we allow YouTube to send out notifications that we're going live. If you're watching this live Q&A on replay, please scrub ahead until this graphic disappears and the actual show begins. If you're watching live and you have any comments or questions, please go ahead and put them in the live chat. But for now, grab a beverage, sit back, and relax while the countdown timer does its thing. Then we'll get started. Happy Sunday, everybody. How goes it? What is new for all of you? I'm in a good mood because I finally got, let me shut off the light. 
There we go. Try to eliminate as much glare off of this. I finally have the pirate complete. And oh man, am I happy with it. Um, this turned out crazy. Uh, now, I've had a couple of questions on the wood that I used here. This is called leopard wood. And um, I got it from my local hardwood supplier here, uh, Beaver Tooth Oak in uh, Medford, Oregon. And uh, when it came in, it was marked at marked as lace wood. And uh, a company ordered a bunch of it, and it was delivered to them and they proceeded to cut it all up and then discovered it was not lace wood. For those who know woods um, pretty well, the this is very red, very orange. And lace wood is more of a tan color. And they're completely different species, but they look very, very similar. And um, I noticed when I started working with it that if I just handled the bare wood and then reached up, scratched my nose or scratched my arm or something like that, it was just within a few seconds that spot where I touched would start burning. I thought, what the devil is going on with this? So I didn't think a whole heck of a lot of it. I didn't make the connection for a couple of days. And I had bought this uh, thinking I was going to make a couple of jewelry boxes for my uh, granddaughters out of it. Let me turn my light back on here. Well, then I made the connection that it. Uh, I started getting that burning every time I uh, picked up and handled that wood. So I looked it up. And saw a few people were having problems with lace wood. I was still under the impression it was lace wood. And in one of the forums I was reading about it, they said, uh, I bet it's leopard wood. A lot of people have a problem with leopard wood. And a couple of pictures to show the differences. And I looked at it and like, oh, my gosh. And so I looked up leopard wood. And sure enough, um, it is known as a skin irritant. And not everybody has an issue with it. I'm just one of those people that do. So I said, like, well, heck, I'm not making jewelry boxes and hand something off to my granddaughters that they may have a reaction to. But I figured for this, um, it was the perfect material to use because, I mean, the chatoyance in that grain is just crazy. Of course, I turned my light back on, so now you can't see it. But um, it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I love it. Uh, I just wish that I didn't have such a nasty reaction to it. Um, but I figured for this, I wanted to do something a little bit special. Um, the pirate itself is just kind of a, first off, it was a uh, public domain image. <laughs> so, um, there weren't any problems with copyrights or trademarks or anything like that. So um, I went ahead and I did that because it's kind of a, you know, benign pattern. And then I got to looking at it and I decided, okay, now that I've got it done, I've made such a big deal about it. Now, what am I going to do with it? And um, because we don't have any place on the wall to hang it. So what I have decided I am going to do is by the end of this broadcast, I'm going to give it away to one of you, my subscribers out here in the chat. And we're doing things a little bit different. I have the chat set for subscribers only, so I know you are subscribers to my channel. Now, I have to say, 
I've been planning this for about three months and I've been doing a lot, a lot of research on this. And I'm sorry to say this has to be for the US only. And that is only because there are a lot of very strict laws about what exotic woods can be sent to what countries. And although leopard wood is not on the sites list as being endangered or uh, forbidden, um, there are a bunch of laws for shipping exotic woods to other countries. And I don't want to put you in a position where you're violating any of your country's laws. And I sure don't want to put myself in a position where I'm violating one of your country's laws. So I'm sorry, but this has to be for the U.S. only. So the way we're going to do this, the way we're going to give it away is I use StreamYard as my streaming ser uh, service. And StreamYard has this neat little giveaway tool. And if you would like to enter to uh, win this pirate epoxy inlay from me, I'll pay shipping. I'll send it all the way. I'll send it to you. All you need to do is type in the chat sometime during this broadcast, type hashtag pirate, just like you see it right there. No space, no capitals, just hashtag pirate, just as you see it right there. And this little giveaway tool will um, go ahead and start collecting entries. Everybody who puts in hashtag pirate will be entered into this drawing. Now, again, it has to be for the U.S. only. And it has to be, <laughs> you know, there is one in every crowd. Whoops. There's one in every crowd. I all, you're a gem. <laughs> you are a gem, my friend. <laughs> I wish I could send it overseas. And I'm, I'm not kidding you. I tried and I tried and I tried to figure out some way of sending it overseas. But. I just don't want anybody to run afoul of their country's laws on importation because some some of the laws are pretty draconian. And I can see why. I really can. But, um, you know, I, I, I tried to figure every way I could and just there's no way. So, okay, we've got about 30 entries so far. So, you know, again, if you're in the U.S. and you would like a chance at the random drawing for this, and I'll share the stream. Um, I'll share my screen when we go to pick so that uh, everybody will see this is on the up and up, and it's just a uh, random thing. Uh, but, uh, yeah, um, now that I have it finished, we got no place to put it. So I figured who, you know, what better, what, what could be better than trying to give it to one of my subscribers. So uh, right now the chat is set for subscribers only. That's how I know y'all are subscribers. <laughs> and um, next week it won't be restricted, but Hey, uh, okay. Bob says, if I win, you have to sign it. Deal. I will sign it no matter what. I'll sign the back and I'll put one of my stickers on there. Um, I was going to, I thought about doing a, an epoxy inlay of my logo on the back, but I thought, no, this looks good and I don't want to mess it up, you know? So <laughs> I don't want to mess it up. Uh, so yeah, we will... Um, uh, Russell, uh, on that along that lines, I figure if the person offers to pay shipping, um, then that is, um, you know, I think it's up to the person. It depends on the person. So, um, 
you know, I, I wouldn't mind doing it. Now, the other part of that is, uh, to your point, Russell, um, there is every possibility that you would end up paying import duties and import fees and VAT and all that other good stuff. I have a friend um, in the UK who won a T-shirt. And by the time everything was all said and done and he paid VAT and import fees and all everything else, that free T-shirt that he won ended up costing him about $40. So, you know, you can see where that's going um that's another you know problem there so if you are in the u.s and you would like to win this pirate uh epoxy inlay that you just saw in the video this morning uh just like it says right there just put that in the chat Hashtag pirate, no spaces, no capitals, no nothing, just like that. And a little bit later on, we will do a uh, random drawing using the uh, StreamYard giveaway tool that I will screen share and then we'll get in touch and we will go from there. So uh, let's go ahead and get into some of the questions uh, and some of the uh, answers and what have you. Uh, Russell has a great uh, tip for us here, reference to the epoxy shrinking as it cures. He uses 22 millimeter stock for a sign. He Z zeros from the bed and tell the, tells the spire that that is 20 millimeters. Run the tool path, pour the goo, then surface to 20 millimeters. So two millimeters of extra goo depth for shrinking. Okay. Um, I have done the conversion for everybody on Imperial. That's about right at uh, 0 0.078. So not quite 80 thousandths of an inch uh, extra that Russell is pouring into uh, his stock to get a, uh, a, a get a good, nice, fairly level uh, surface when he pours. Uh, I tell you, I have uh, I have a love hate relationship, <laughs> but mainly love. Um, our friend uh, Rob Sandstrom, and there is, uh, I believe I put a link to his YouTube channel and his video down in the uh, description of, uh, I think it's in this video, and I, but I know it's in the video. He did a video on calculating and using weight instead of volume to mix the epoxy and then he will send you if you email him he'll send you a uh, copy of a spreadsheet he made that uses the uh, that conversion factor uh, to go from volume to weight and it will help you estimate how much epoxy to mix up and uh, for each pocket and i have to tell you it's pretty stinking accurate in fact it's a little bit too uh accurate and uh, when it came time to pour the gray for his hat up here i was kind of sweating it because it was real accurate and i i thought i had short poured but um, his name is Rob Sandstrom Marie. And like I said, I put a link to it in the video's description. I think I also put it in the description of uh, this live stream, but I'm not certain. So um, I would head over to his channel. I would subscribe and pay attention, as I said in the video, to his uh, video titled, Why Do I Use Weight Instead of Volume for Measuring Epoxy? And uh, he explains the whole thing. And um, it's really, I mean, it, 
his um his calculator is so accurate i really was sweating that poor so uh let's see here um okay said so, yes his link is in the descriptions oh and steve the man of the hour oh man there it is there's a link to his channel right there steve thank you very much i really appreciate it uh let's see here um let me go over here and see john thompson wants to know did you seal it all the way around yes sir i did i sealed it all the way around uh just so i could handle it and then as you saw in the video i was wearing a respirator when i went to surface it because i figure if it's going to do that to my skin what's it going to do to my lungs so you know yes i did seal it and uh basically i sprayed it with uh um uh, a uh, satin urethane so uh let's see here um extreme woodworker wants to know when you sand epoxy inlaid w into wood how do you avoid wood fibers getting embedded into the epoxy uh the epoxy is cured by the time it comes time to sand and so there is there is nothing uh uh it, it, it's completely hardened so that's not going to be an issue one thing i didn't show in the video is that you have to go in after the carve and clean out all the chips of epoxy and the way i did that was i ran the v-carve i always run the v-carve toolpath first and then i run the clearance path then i would run the v-carve toolpath a second time and that bit went around once there was space in there from everything being the clearance path once there was space in there those chips had some place to go and they it cleaned right up and then i just took a stiff bristle brush and uh scrubbed at it a little bit and had my dust collector down there and sucked it all up but that gets rid of all of the uh chips from the epoxy and um then you can pour and be okay so uh let's see tim belt says the only time i tried to do epoxy inlay it was on an edge grain cutting board put sanding sealer even on both sides and the board always cupped um i've not done an edge grain uh pour this is only the second pour i've ever done the first one was an mdf and the second one was in this leopard wood but let me throw you a tip here and this is something that counts for v carving as well you have two issues here with uh, wood cupping number one you're removing a bunch of material when you take out that pocket uh, for the initial pour the other issue is the curing process produces heat and that is going to tend to try to warp the material a little bit but even on a standard v carve that can be a problem if you i don't and i don't know if this is going to work we're going to try it if you see the growth rings on this piece of wood how they arch upward toward the top surface I find that by making sure that's the way the material is oriented, it's less likely to warp than if it's like so. Because the growth rings, the natural tendency for this is to want to warp this way with the growth rings. And when you start removing material, you're releasing stresses in the grain and it's going to make it want to warp even more so by carving so by carving with the growth rings running this way 
it's kind of counteracting that natural tendency to try to warp. So it won't eliminate it completely, but it does help. Now in the video I did on setting up the work, whoops, setting up the work offsets, this was the material I was surfacing. And um, I didn't want to allude to it, but here it is. Uh, the uh, I had to make sure that this was nice and flat. And so I surfaced it nice and flat, as you saw in that video. And then after I got finished carving and doing all the pouring, it did twist just a little bit. Uh, the first pass, I ended up surfacing it. I made three passes at 10 thousandths of an inch per pass, which is Let's see what that is. Uh, 0 0.01 inches in millimeters. You'd think I'd know this by now. That's about a quarter of a millimeter uh, per pass. And it did this side nice and smooth. This was nice and level. And then there was a little spot up here that it didn't touch. So it did warp and twist just a little bit since I had surfaced it uh, before I started. Um, and so the, um, the point being the heat and the orientation of the uh, wood do matter. And that'll help, help it avoid uh, warping and twisting on you. So uh, let's see. I hope that answers that. Um, let's see here. Uh, would be says we have a very similar wood here in Portugal. Unfortunately, it's a protected species of tree in the oak family. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's an issue where we all face. I mean, uh john wants to know do you have an issue when v carving with chip out of small areas and points not as much as i used to and the reason for that is i always run the v bit first because when you're cutting into the surface of that flat stock that point is supported uh from both sides so you just carve and make that point. If you do the clearance pass first, it's just kind of riding along the edge. And when it gets to that point that's already been started by that clearance bit, that's when you get chip out. So I always run the V bit first, then I run the clearance passes second. So uh, that's just that's just me. So uh let's see here i'm trying to get all your questions um figured out here uh, okay let's see here um b -b 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 okay bob helter says i think you explained how to figure out the volume for a pocket i cheated and I'm going to go back. I should have done this, and I don't know why I didn't. Um, um, I used a resin calculator online to help um, in conjunction with uh, Rob uh, Sandstrom's uh, uh, spreadsheet. And I don't have the uh, link to it. I will link it um, as soon as we're done here. And basically, let me go ahead and screen share. We'll go into Aspire here. And I have this brought up. Uh, let me go ahead and see. I'll do the brown for his shirt since we're right here handy. Uh, if you go over to your measure tool, and go down here to where it says span and contour properties click on that put the check mark there 
and then come down and just click on the brown for his shirt. Now it doesn't select the entire vector. It just selects a little area. And if you come down here, it tells you the area is 6.36 inches. Okay. And what I did was I entered that into that calculator and then entered my proposed depth. In my case, I said one eighth of an inch. And that gave me the cubic inches of this entire brown area vector right here. So that's how I figured out the volume. And if it was a case of I had three or four vectors that were the same color, we are working with Vectric. I am um, trying like crazy to get Vectric to add this to where you can select more than vector, more than one vector at a time. Currently, you can only select one vector at a time. So I would have to open up the calculator and then add, say, for instance, his thumb, which is 0.16, and then his fist, which is 1.05, and just add those together in my calculator, then put it into that epoxy area calculator, and that gave me how many cubic inches. And it will work in uh, cubic millimeters, too. That calculator will. But that's how I figured out the volume of my uh, of each one of my pores. So I hope that answered uh, that. And I will be doing a, uh, a separate video on that later on. OK. So let's see. Um, see if I have. Uh, any other questions here? Um, uh, okay, multiply volume by 0.554113 to get fluid ounces. Okay, okay. If that works, that works. If you're wondering what this hashtag, if you're just joined us and you're wondering what the hashtag pirate thing is, now that I have the pirate completed, I have no place to put it. So I want to give it away to one of my subscribers in the U.S. because of various laws on importing and exporting exotic woods. You have to be in the U.S. I apologize. To enter into that drawing, just in the chat, type in hashtag pirate. And a little bit later on, uh, we will give it away. As it sits right now, I have 47 entries. And, um, you know, we can make it an even 50. So <laughs> uh, let's see here. Try to get into more. Uh, Bob Hillhouse says, you used a liquid pigment too. Can you share what it was? I tried to put links to those in the description box, but you are limited on the number of characters you can have in the description. So I'm currently in the process of writing up a website article for this, and I will post a website article and I'll make a uh, public uh, community post when the website article is up for it. I'll also share it on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, and I will have links to everything because I use several different sources. It wasn't all from the epoxy resin store. In fact, I think the only thing I got from the epoxy resin store was the uh, resin itself. I used black diamond mica powders, but there were two or three other sources and two or three other companies that I bought the liquid resins from, uh, excuse me, the liquid uh, tints from. Uh, okay. Um, yes, you asked twice. Um, yeah, the, so I, I didn't say anything during the video because I thought I'd be able to put everything in the uh, description, but there were just too many. Uh, and it overdid my characters and I had to take a bunch of stuff out and those end up being the major culprits. So, 
Uh, let's see here. Um, we got. Okay, I.L. Peleg says, I would love it if you talked about talk more about the use of the blowtorch unless you plan to talk about it in a coming video. I can talk about it now, and I can talk about it uh, then, too. Uh, and I will do a video on it. Um, and that kind of dovetails uh, right here. How much trouble did you have with bubbles? I didn't have much trouble at all. The first pour on the piece was um, clear, and that's done to seal the wood, because every time your bit touches the piece of material, you are creating end grain. And end grain is what's going to suck up uh, any kind of pigments or what have you. Now, a couple of folks um, have told me that it, depending upon what color it is, uh, the uh, some colors will bleed into that end grain more than others. Uh, one person said white didn't bleed at all, but black was horrible. It bled real bad. And I've heard that from several other people. It depends on who um, uh, on on the wood and the color of the uh, epoxy. So I poured that whole thing clear. And on my MDF test piece, I showed a picture of it in the video. You could see where that MDF absorbed that clear epoxy into the sides about an eighth of an inch all the way around that, that pocket. So that's why I coated the whole, almost the whole top surface with the uh, epoxy on, on the real pirate. So it wouldn't do that. How that pertains to bubbles is by sealing that and being real vigilant with the um, with the uh, torch. And I use the torch, you know, down low, just light the torch and then just wave it over the surface of the wet epoxy. And uh, that pops any bubbles that rise. Now, remember, we're only going about an eighth of an inch. The deepest pour I did was uh, 0.15 inches, which is about 3.8 millimeters. That was uh, the pocket I carved for that clear. And to answer you before you ask, um, the clear epoxy was carved down to 0.15 inches or about 3.8 millimeters. And the rest of them were carved an eighth of an inch deep, 0.125 inches or about 3.1 millimeters. So yes, I carved the, uh, the clear pocket the deepest and then all of the other colors were carved into that clear, just slightly shallower. So I didn't carve through that clear into the wood. I carved into the clear and poured it into that clear. And that helped eliminate a lot of bubbles. So I would light the torch, wave it just over the surface because you don't want to heat up that epoxy uh, too much. Just wave it over the surface it'll pop any bubbles on the surface and then for the first hour i would come back every 10 minutes and pop those bubbles and if you stand to where your light is kind of shining your lights on the other side of the epoxy shining down on it and you're looking at it so that the epoxy is between you and the light source you can see the little bubbles and you can see it uh see them pop as you wave the torch over them. Some people will use a heat gun because they don't like the idea of an open flame like that. The only problem with a heat gun is a heat gun also produces wind and it can blow epoxy all over the place if you're not careful. Fair warning, this is a very messy enterprise. So it's, uh, no. <laughs> 
be careful is all I'm going to say. Get, I've got a one gallon can of acetone. I probably used maybe half of a cup. Get yourself some acetone because you will need it for cleaning up. Uh, the uncured epoxy. Once it's cured, it's done. It's there. So uh, let's see here. Let me. Um, okay. Mike dances with Aardvark's great name. Wants to know is there a lower limit on the line width for epoxy? Uh, again, I'm going to refer you to Rob Sandstrom. There's a link to his channel in the uh, description of this video. He did an excellent uh, video on how narrow is too narrow. And it's less to do with the width of the line than it is to do with the depth. And the, because CNC V carving, uh, the depth of the cut is controlled by the width of the line. You can go too shallow. And the reason for that is you're going to surface it when you're done and you could just sand it away or machine it away. So what that so the short answer is yes, there is a limit. The long answer is I don't know exactly what that limit is, and I would invite you to hit Rob's channel. He talks about line width and depth and uh, what he recommends based on his experience. And he is my guru, believe me. I have learned more from him than I can quantify. So... Um, Let's see here. Boy, the questions just keep coming in. Uh, I will try to get to everybody. Uh, Marie Wood wants to know, Mark, do you have a blog? I have a website, marklindsaycnc.com, sponsored by Harneal Media. And uh, there is a blog. You, you will see blog posts there. I have not updated the blog posts in a long time, but I'm working on that now. So, um, been having email issues and a couple of other things, but um, we're uh, we're working on it. But I am working on updating my blog now as we speak. And there's a link to my website down in the description of every video. Uh, let's see here. John Tromans wants to know how durable is epoxy on a cutting board? Very durable. Uh, more durable than the wood. The thing is, if you if you look at guys like Rob Sandstrom, Shane Peters, when they do a cutting board, uh, like Shane gave me this tip. He always asks, are you right-handed or left-handed? Well, first of all, most people are not going to use these as cutting boards. They're going to use them as display pieces. But he'll ask, are you right-handed or left-handed? If they're right-handed, he makes sure to put the epoxy on the left side, unless the customer demands it be right in the middle. Because if you're right-handed, you're going to use your right hand. You're going to be cutting over to this side. So by putting the logo over here, it's not going to get cut anyway. So... That's one thing, but it, the epoxy is more durable than the wood, but it will scratch. I mean, nothing is impervious to a knife blade. So um, let's see here. Uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see here. Uh, does your project have to be pretty parallel at the time of your pour because your pour is only an eighth of an inch thick? Yes, and that's why I use that digital level. Um, I don't have it out here with me or I'd show it to you. Um, it's not expensive and it makes a beep, beep, beep noise when you get it level. And I use just standard regular old um, softwood shims that you can buy at the Home Improvement Center for like, $3 for a bundle of them. 
and use that to level shim it up on one side or down or what have you and got it as level as i could so that it didn't spill over off to the side and onto the table or even off of the table so <laughs> but yes uh, let's see here uh Dwayne ruthig wants to know on your after pour surfacing does the bit gum or burn the epoxy no i've seen that on glue joints that i've surfaced uh glue is a lot more flexible epoxy is a lot more brittle and it slices nice and clean i mean uh, i'm sure you've seen people uh turn epoxy projects on a lathe and they get those long ribbons well imagine smaller chips it's the same thing i mean it it machines really nice really nice uh i was shocked at how well it came out before i sanded or anything so no i didn't have any kind of gumminess or burning or anything and but now check with the epoxy manufacturer on um how long you need to wait before you do any carving or cutting or machining mine it was 24 hours and that dovetailed just fine with what i was doing and how long i needed to wait because i had other things i was doing so it was usually 24 25 hours before i could bring it out here and go to the next step so okay uh we have some off topic here um let's see tim belt wants to know do any of you guys use lasers much with your cnc work i do not have a laser but i want to add one to the avid cnc um and i've wanted to for a long time it just haven't gotten there yet uh, then he says does aspire support lasers there is a separate laser module that you purchase to add to Aspire that will bump up the capability of the laser to unbelievable levels. I mean, if you go to Vectrix website, or excuse me, if you go to Vectrix YouTube channel and look for, just search their YouTube channel for laser, they do a demonstration on a project where he 3D carves a tiger. So he carves a 3D model, then goes back with the laser and shades and shadows that 3D model. And oh man, does it look cool. It really looks awesome. And that's got me real interested in adding a laser to the Avid CNC. It just haven't got there yet. That'll probably somewhere down the road. Uh, let's see. Russell has an addendum to what I said. Heat does soften cured epoxy. So bad feeds and speeds can make it gum up the bit. Okay, I haven't I haven't uh, gotten to that point yet. Uh, I took, I used the uh, Amana RC2255 uh, surfacing bit, uh, followed chain, Peter's and Rob Sandstrom's recommendations. And that thing is awesome. I'm here to tell you. Oh, man, it's neat. So uh, let's see. Yeah, you and me both. Uh, Peter Van Vliet says, FYI, on uh, Vectric laser cut and fill toolpath, there's a bug in the calculation and previewing that's happening in version 11. That's not a problem in 10.5. They're researching. Okay, so they're working on it. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, let's see. I've got two more here. Um, Jason Kunda wants to know, is it normal for a 30-degree V-bit to cut slightly deeper than the clearance bit on a V-carve? That can happen. Yes. Um, um the v bit cut slightly deeper uh what okay this is let's um let's go over here to a spire and i'm gonna take well uh, let's pick something 
big here. Let's close this number one. And we'll jump over to, I'll just use the clear tool path. We'll get back into the clear tool path. And well, it doesn't do that on a, hmm. Hmm, man. On a V-carve tool path, it doesn't let you change the number of steps. Um, Man, I'm going to have to get back with you on that. I have a video planned on this issue, but it was mainly on pockets. I haven't tried this on V-Carve. Um, it is not normal, but it can happen. And the problem comes in a lot of times with the clearance tool path, bit deflection can be an issue. Let me stop sharing. Bit deflection can be an issue, and that'll cause it to carve slightly shallow uh, if you don't have your feeds and speeds exactly right on the money. Um, I'm going to have to dig into the V-carve situation a little bit more, but I do plan on doing a video on this issue. So uh, let's see here. Fred Waters says, I have a Syntec 6 MB controller. I like to set up a G59 offset to install alignment pins, but it really isn't like the soft where you have. I don't have a use offset button. Any ideas? Get a hold of uh, either get a hold of Syntec tech support or look for a support forum. Just about every controller out there has a way for you to set up an offset okay um, i don't know if that's proprietary software or if it uses uh, another third-party software but get a hold of syntec or look for the syntec support forum for that controller i'm using my cursor like you can see uh, look for the uh, uh, support for that controller and find out from them. Uh, I have never used a Syntec controller. I don't know anything about it. So I would hate like heck uh, to send you in the wrong direction. So, so let's see here. All righty. We have been on for about 52 minutes. So I'm going to assume... Let's do this. Let's not do that. Let's do something else. Hit the wrong button. And let's do this screen. And we are going to look at the giveaway tool here. I'm hoping everybody can see the giveaway tool. We have 50 entries. So again, if you want to... Enter for your chance to win the pirate. What we'll need you to do is put in the chat, just like you see it right here, hashtag pirate, no spaces, no capitals, just like you see it here. And we will see if we get any new uh, entries here. And if we don't, I'm going to give it another minute. I've been live for 54 minutes. When we hit 55 minutes, we'll go ahead and do the giveaway. And um, we'll see if we can send this puppy to a new home. So, oh, man, because I'll be honest with you. I got no place to put it. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. We're just a few seconds away. Ah, Lewis, you got in there just right. So um, Tom Miller makes a good point here. It's best to check with Vectric that your CNC is able to fully make use of their laser module. Yes, yes, that is true. So uh, let's see here. Um, let's go ahead and 
we will share my screen here. And I'm going to assume everybody who wants to win this here Happy Pirate has entered. Because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push the draw button. And let's see if we can give this pirate a new home. So on the count of three, two, one, kaboom. And let's see who we have. Dave Blackburn. All right. Congrats, Dave Blackburn. You have won the Happy Pirate. So, um, I believe you and I are Facebook friends. Um, I will get a hold of you through Facebook. If we are not, Dave, um, if you will go to my um my uh, main channel page here on YouTube, then go all the way over to the about. You'll find my email address. Send me an email and I'll get your shipping address and we will get this sent out to you. And yes, I will sign the back and put one of my stickers on the back and a bunch of other fun stuff. So congrats, Dave Blackburn. Um, and I wanted to say, Thank you to everybody. Um, I know this has been kind of a weird live stream. Normally, I do not restrict the chat to subscribers only. I leave it open to everybody. But I also know that when you are going to do a giveaway, there are a ton of people. They just cruise. Um, YouTube looking for giveaways and they'll subscribe to a channel right there and enter the giveaway and then they're gone. And I wanted it to go to you guys, the real ones, you know, the folks that have been here from the get go and from the beginning. So, um, Dave, uh, I will try to get a hold of you. You're very welcome. I will either get a hold of you through uh, Facebook or if we're not Facebook friends already, or Instagram buddies already, uh, I didn't think about Instagram, uh, <laughs> then check uh, the About page on my YouTube channel and shoot me an email, okay? Uh, but uh, I wanted to say thank you to everybody. I hope I got all of your questions. If I missed a question, Please throw it in the chat now because uh, somebody was asking, I believe it was uh, Jeff over at JMJ Love Dance wants to know what's next. Well, what's next is the, uh, the C word. Yes, it's coming in uh, two months. So that means I have to get ready and I have to get going on Christmas. So as is traditional, I put this channel on hiatus over the holidays. What that means is there will not be another edited video until after the new year. There will be, however, weekly live Q and A's here every Sunday. That is not going to change. And there will be the weekly Monday night members only live streams. That is not going to change. So uh, there won't be another edited video until after the new year because my grandkids, while they don't follow me, they don't follow what I do here. They are smart enough to know that if you check grandpa's channel, you might get a glimpse of what you're getting for Christmas. Well, that's not going to happen. So I just put the channel on hiatus so I can focus on getting Christmas gifts out. And um, I will do a few videos in the background to kind of get ahead for next year. But this today's was the last um, edited video for the year. So what's next is next week is an open Q&A 
Um, so bring your comments, questions, threats, demands for payments. Um, only one grandkid gets sawdust, but yes. Uh, okay, I all says here, not a question, but you missed my comment. For some V carves, I plan them to be uh, half a millimeter below the surface so that in theory on the surface, they are out of focus, but after sanding, they become more in focus. Yes, absolutely. And uh, if you go back to the uh, part three of this series, um, I uh, when I carved the uh, skull and crossbones up here, that black outline, I was worried about how wide that black outline was actually going to be. And I started it, I, I set my start depth to 0 0.03 inches in millimeters. Um, I did a little bit less than that. I don't remember what I did. Maybe I did 0.01, yes, 0 0.01, about a quarter of a millimeter. So, uh, 0.25 millimeters. I had set that for the start depth. So it would, in theory, uh, cut uh, about 0.25 millimeters deeper than it should. And it worked. So uh, let's see here. Uh, sawdust for the grandkids. Surely chips, not dust. No, I sweep out from under the table saw. Because the other dirty little secret is sometimes I use the chips in projects. So. <laughs> uh, let's see. Steve Knoll says, Mark, Christmas and New Year's are on Sunday. Just a point. Well, I mean, I'll spend part of my Christmas and my New Year's with y'all. New Year's, I have no issue. I'm old. I don't do nothing for New Year's. You know. In fact, uh I'm so old, I'll put it to you this way. Linda and I have a bag of confetti, a little Ziploc bag. And at midnight on New Year's, I toss the bag to her. She tosses it to me, and that's our New Year's celebration. We don't go, we leave that out to the, uh, we leave that to the amateurs. No, I we don't go party or do anything. So, uh, but yeah, I'll gladly spend part of my Christmas and New Year's with y'all. If we're home, I'll have to triple check on that. Who knows? Maybe I'll do a uh, uh, a remote live stream from uh, somewhere else. Okay. Um, I've nattered on and on for too long. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for everything. Uh, I mean, this is, this is more fun than a human should be allowed to have. And I really honestly <laughs> that she does i really honestly appreciate each and every one of you guys um you make this worth it all you 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 make this all the fun that it is and um i'm having a ball with it uh members um uh, members only live stream tomorrow 5 30 pacific 8 30 eastern be there or be square if you're not a member well shame on you number one uh, you can find out more information about channel membership by clicking the join button down there next to the subscribe button which you have already clicked obviously and a little panel will pop up and a video will play, tell you all about channel memberships here on the channel. For now, I'm going to say I got to go track down Dave Blackburn and get this puppy wrapped up and put into a box. And um, so y'all take care. Go make some chips. Have some fun. Thank you very, very much for everything. And. Um, Y'all take care. Get out of here. Go on. Go on. Bye-bye. Thank you, y'all.